What's going on, Misfit Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Matt, the Misfit. Tonight, we're going to go over the final AEW Dynamite before AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view event, which happens live this Sunday on pay-per-view from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, this show was, it was all right. Um, not the greatest go-home show, but there were some great matches on the show. Like, for example, the main event, which was killer main event, which saw the Lucha Bros defend the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles against Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta of Blackpool Combat Club. We also saw seen the House of Black defend their Trios titles against AR Fox, Blake Christian, and Grand Metalik in a actually a really fun Trios match, which also had one of the best, like in my opinion, a badass finish to that match. And Orange Cassidy defended the international championship against newly signed member of Ozzy Open, Kyle Fletcher, also uh, Mark Davis was announced as being signed to All Elite Wrestling. Uh, but before we get into the other part of the news, if you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button, comment down below, follow the social medias at Misfit Podcast TV on Twitter, Misfit Wrestling Pod on Instagram. You can listen to the other audio outlets: Spotify, Audible, Pandora. Uh, uh, Amazon Music, Audible, I've probably mentioned Audible already, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. Uh, let's talk about one of the big stories here. Um, CM Punk. Uh, let me look, let me get, look for the, the, the CM Punk news here. Because we got to talk about CM Punk a lot. Uh, That, oh, here we go, from PW Insider. Uh, they announced earlier today, or they reported earlier today, AEW would announce uh, the premiere episode of AEW's Collision Show. Uh, it will emanate from the from the United Center in Chicago, which was official, that was made official, and did confirm CM Punk will appear or would be appearing on AEW television on that show. In June, we also found out from Fightful Select that, uh, I believe it was Fightful Select, that the pipe papers that was sent to CM Punk was not had, it was nothing to do about being sued about whatever the fuck he said last week. Uh, it was actually had to do with him not wanting to, or basically to stop talking about the, uh, or either not stop talking about it or, or just not talking about it at all, the brawl out situation, which I'm pretty sure at this point, Every one of those guys involved with the brawl out situation from, uh, even though he wasn't actually a part of the brawl, brawl, uh, hangman page, even though he was not really a part of it, like the actual, the actual incident itself, the young bucks, Kenny Omega, uh, and CM Punk. I think they're just done talking about it all together. So I think, I think they're just happy to sign about sign, sign an NDA to stop talking about it because I'm tired of hearing about it. Um, so there is that, uh, so yeah, CM Punk will be back. Uh, people got to get over it. So there, there is that, but AEW dynamite opened up with a international championship match. Uh, orange Cassidy defended against Kyle Fletcher in, a, in an outstanding opening match here. Uh, of course, Mike Davis, who's dealing with an injury coming off of, I don't know when he got injured, but he did relinquish the um, New Japan Strong Tag Titles and the IWGP Tag Team Titles. Uh, he and Kyle Fletcher of uh, Aussie Open. Uh, this match was this match was great. Back and forth action here. Uh, near the end of the match here, Cassidy, Orange Cassidy uh, aims for a high, uh, diving cross body, but uh, he is caught in midair. And driven into the mat with with a Michinoku driver, Orange Cassidy kicks out. Fletcher uh, manages to hit a big running boot, but Orange Cassidy manages to fight back once again. As he starts uh, hitting his slow uh, his his slow moving punches that he's known for doing, um, and hits a hits a Michinoku driver all of his own. 
Uh, Fletcher kicks out. Uh, then Kyle Fletcher uh, then nails a pile driver and a spinning tombstone. Orange Cassie was able to kick out the the uh, challenger known as Kyle Fletcher. Takes the second rope with the champion uh, to hit a, 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 a avalanche. Men Chinook driver again was getting ear fall there. Uh, Orange Cassidy counters. Uh, Fletcher strikes him to the mat. Um, he, but again, Orange Punch attempt by Orange Cassidy is met with a, a super kick or thrust kick, what you want to call it. Uh, Fletcher a, the names for another move. But he gets countered by Orange Cassidy with a rope, which allows Orange Cassidy to retain the championship. And I thought that was a, f- a fun little match to start off the show. Um, um, and we knew we didn't get another great match until we got to the House of Black stuff. Uh, next up, we had uh, Ricky Starks backstage talking about his not. Basically, he's in the Battle Royal. And he's sick of what's going on with uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson. But uh, Bullet Club Gold then attacks while you know from behind, and they take out or not Orange Cassidy. They take out uh, Ricky Starks, and that's how that segment ended. Jungle Boy Jack Perry is shown backstage, uh, saying he drove to Las Vegas a lot, and each time he's each time he's a little bit different. Uh, one thing is it's the same, which is the feeling of standing inside the ring. And that has given him a purpose. Uh, it lets it lets him be the man he wants to be. And on Monday, he will drive down that road as a EW champion. Um, FTR, they come out to the ring for their segment here. Uh, Cash Wheeler says it would be easy to say Jeff Jarrett is trash, but he's outsmarted them every step of the way. However, he's lucky to, he's been lucky, and he's talking about Jarrett's been lucky. And on Sunday, uh, that luck runs out. Dax Harwood says a few guitars won't stop them and to, uh, won't stop them from saying to, and to stay relevant. He attaches his name to the best tag team in the world today. He says, uh, uh, Dax says, if he thinks the head of the tag team division will be rejects from TNA, it's not going to happen. Uh, he should call the queen of the mountain, and he's not talking about his bitch of a wife named Karen. He's talking about Dixie Carter, which I fucking laughed my ass off about that one. Jared's crew come, then turns up, uh, and Briscoe show, so, uh, so Mark Briscoe comes out here at one point, uh, and the whole thing about, you know, Mark Briscoe doesn't seem to believe what uh, Dax is saying is true because he accidentally, last week, he accidentally, I believe it was last week, he accidentally, uh, either, it was either last week or it was either on Dynamite or it was on Rampage because I had a white Rampage. What? Ooh, it might have been on Rampage, uh, pile driving, um, Gabe Briscoe, uh, Jarrett's teenage uh, rejections uh, come to the ring, uh, and Briscoe shoves everyone out of the way. Uh, he beats, he slaps the piss out of fucking uh, Sanjay Depp, which uh, Sanjay Depp sold, uh, sold it hilariously. Um, he's t- he's told Jay Lothar like, "You're my boy, but I'm tired of this bullshit," and and he and he's like, he, he's gone. That's how that segment ended. Um, I, I'll, I'll give my two cents on what I think is going to happen in that match when we get to the predictions of uh, Double or Nothing. Sammy Guevara is showing backstage because he's asked to talk, apparently. Uh, Renee asks... Uh, Renee didn't say a fucking thing. He tells Renee that MJF's offer to uh, still stands if he just lays down on Sunday. Uh, Guevara... Says uh, it's a lot of money, but he won't lay down. Instead, he's going to take the tie from him. Yawn. Next up, we had a House of Black Rules match uh, for the AEW Trio Championships. Uh, it was House of Black defeating AR Fox, Grand Metalik, and Blake Christian. Uh, 
dealer's choice was a, a, a rule that was applied here. It says dealer's choice is one man in and one man out. Uh, not, necess- not necessarily by tag. So I like that the ex- this match establishes the tag team rules do not apply to these matches. I think it's funny. Uh, so this match was fine. I, I like this match. My favorite spot of the match was near the end of it. So, so Metalik uh, runs the top, runs the rope, hits a, hits a double drop kick on Buddy Matthews. Malachi Black uh, this basically takes up both Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews as they then dive uh, out inside the ring or out to the uh, out of the ring to take each man out. Ar Fox, who is incredible, uh, aims to join them, but Brody King is waiting for him. Drops him with a big <laughs> with a big chop. Excuse me. But uh, his partners pulls pull uh, on Brody's legs. Uh, Ar Fox manages to kick him out, kick Brody out of the ring. They all brawl to the outside. Ar Fox hits an exploding. Uh, Sent on to wipe everyone out. Uh, back inside the ring, it's Buddy Matthews who comes off the top rope with a stomp to Ar Fox, who looks like who made it look like he like somebody just broke his vertebrae. That's what it looked like, and it looked sick as hell. Um, but, uh, Buddy Matthews then in then locked in the prism trap, the move that uh, his girlfriend uh, Rhea Ripley uses currently. Which I thought was a nice little tribute to Rio there. Uh, Metalik tries to stop him, and and it's not it's not working very well. Well, as Malachi Black uh, locks in the knee bar onto Met, uh, Metalik, uh, uh, then Brody King cuts off Christian uh, Blake Christian and does the 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 whatever the the, the move that he did to. Uh, Darby Allen to win the Battle Royal a few months ago. And I thought this was a sick-ass finish. You had the Prism Trap being applied by, by Buddy Matthews, who, by the way, won the match for his team with that move, which was cool. Uh, Malachi applying the knee bar to Metalik and Christian, uh, not Christian Cage, uh, Blake Christian just being choked to death <laughs> by Brody King. So uh, Brody King, Mouse House of Black, they are awesome. I'm they're 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 killing it as the AEW tag team uh, trios champions, um, and I like the the look of the uh, house of uh, house rules matches. Uh, usually, I don't care about the lighting of of what it looks like, but it looks pretty cool. Um, and you're always going to get some type of good match out of the House of Black because Brody King for his size is incredible. We know how great Buddy Matthews is. We know how fantastic Malachi Black Black is. So, and they'll be uh, they'll be a, a integral part on AEW Collision. And you know what? With CM Punk coming back, I would not mind seeing CM Punk versus Malachi Black go at it one time. So, there's that. Blackpool Combat Club is shown backstage, saying tonight they'll be claiming the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships for the. Uh, Lucha Bros and two objective uh, and objective two is ending the elite this Sunday at double or nothing. John Moxley says they are the best in the world, which may be like a, I, I'm assuming is a little tease of CM Punk there because anytime Punk is either coming back or debuting for the company, they'll throw in some type of tease containing CM Punk verbiage in there. Uh, and his hand, and Moxley continues to say, his hand doesn't shake when he says that. Uh, that's the standard they've set for themselves. Next up here, got MJF cutting another boring ass porn promo. I'm I'm over MJF's boring long ass promos. Uh, I do not give a shit about this fatal four way uh, pillars title match because AEW hasn't made me care about these these this match. Because I don't care about anybody in this match. Maybe outside of Darby Allen. Like, sure. Jungle Boy beat Jack, uh, not, not Jack Perry. Jungle Boy beat Christian at fucking at, at Revolution. Cool. 
Okay, and what has he done since then? Nothing. MJF barely fucking wrestles, so why should I care here? Uh, Darby Allen, who's had, who actually had won matches and was doing a great job with the TNT Championship. Um, I don't know where Sting is at. I just don't care. I just don't care. This this segment ended with uh, Sammy Guevara for some reason coming out to the aid of Darby Allen, who, by the way, is a supposed to be not Darby Allen. Sammy Guevara, who's supposed to be the fucking heel, is I is being a babyface. I because she's still part of the Jericho Appreciation Society. It doesn't make a lot of fucking sense. Moving on, Taya Valkyrie versus Lady Frost. I like Lady Frost. I don't give a shit about Taya Valkyrie because I think she's really fucking boring. Um, this bored me not because of Lady Frost, main because uh, it's because of Taya Valkyrie. And then another. And speaking of boring. J- Cargill interrupts and does the stupid shit for her double or nothing match here uh, and Ty Valkyrie wins here uh, and I just don't care about this or this title match because um, I know that Ty Valkyrie is not winning the title on Saturday on Sunday and I will tell you why when I go through my predictions here uh, Tony Khan is showing backstage he talks about the AEW Dynamite, not Dynamite, AEW Collision debut in the United Center. That's how that works here. Adam Hangman Page, uh, then is shown backstage, says he doesn't know if he and Kenny Omega will ever be, re- will ever really be friends. Or, 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 or something along the lines of if they were ever really friends, but uh, they were something more important. Family. Family sticks together, and this Sunday it leads to anarchy in the arena, and Blackpool Combat Club will play, will pay in blood. This now this segment, why well, fuck? I love this segment here. We had a contract signing act with Adam Cole and Chris Jericho. Adam Cole has already has already signed the contract for their unsanctioned match, which was made official on Dynamite or not Dynamite on Rampage. He says uh, Cole says uh, uh, for weeks. He wondered why Jericho did what he did and while, why he thought it was a good idea to make him watch uh, Britt get it, the shit kicked out of him, uh, with her, which at this point, basically from everything that I've read about it, she probably fucking deserved it. Just saying. Um, but maybe it's time, maybe it's because he's a scumbag and maybe it's because he's disguised, he's a, a disguised, a disgusting human being. Um, no, he did it uh, because he believes he's invincible because he is Chris Jericho and AEW should be thankful to have him. Cole says this Sunday he will beat the living shit out of... He didn't say shit, he said hell here, but it sounds like cooler to say shit out of Jericho and uh, AEW can be thankful. It is unsanctioned as the blood will be on his hands and that's how he likes it. He's talking about Cole's hands. Uh, he hopes Jericho knows that it is taking all the power inside of him not to beat the, him to an ever to within an inch of his life. All right, now uh, he can't do that, and so instead he explains what will happen on Sunday. He's going to break Jericho's legs, will shatter shatter his jaw, will break his hand, so he should hurry up and sign the damn paper. Because at this point, Jericho is already out here, uh, out here. Uh, and he calls him, he says, sign the damn paper, you stupid son of a bitch, or something like that. I think that's what he says. I'm not sh- sure that was actual verbiage. Uh, Jericho says, before he signs, perhaps Cole's in- a head injury has impacted him. Uh, decides, he decides to remind Cole of what happens, what had happened to the, uh, the basically the whole thing uh, Cole mentioned about Britt Baker. Um, and then he goes uh, Cole into touching to touching him with the uh, as there's no a no contact rule in place for this contract signing. Jericho claims that uh, Cole is a coward and he will knock Cole's teeth down his throat uh, this Sunday as Cole can't beat the Ocho. Uh, he, uh, he says Cole is outsmarted as there is five of them because because you know. The Jericho appreciation decides to get in the face of because Roderick Strong is out there too, uh, and he gets in. They try to get in the face of, of Strong and Cole. Um, 
Uh, however, uh, Adam Cole says he's decided to make a phone call and says that the person you made a phone call is lives right here in Las Vegas and is a crazier son of a bitch than the Jericho Appreciation Society combined. It's Sabu, and Sabu comes out, which I didn't see that shit coming. That threw me the hell off. Uh, Sabu comes out here, massive pop, great, great uh, tribute to his uh, ACW theme, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Cole hands uh, Sabu a chair that just boom, and he just fucking does the, the trademark Sabu throwing chair into the face of Daddy Magic as GAS runs away, and uh, we find out that Cole is going to be the special enforcer, even though our... our Sabu is going to be a special enforcer, even though Cole said he's going to be there to watch uh, Cole's back. I like this segment mainly because because Sabu coming out uh, surprised the shit out of me because uh, I didn't see it coming. And I like when things surprise me where I don't know if it's happening or not. So that was pretty cool. Uh, next up, because there was more to that, Rock Strong defeated... Uh, Daniel Garcia, this was a fine match. Uh, nothing too spectacular happened here. Uh, Strong hits a, a gut buster and then the end of heartache to win here. Uh, like I said, it was all right. Nothing big happened on the match there. Uh, so that's how that ended here. Uh, main event. Uh, Lucha Bros defeated Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Utah for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. This match was phenomenal. Uh, near the end of the match, uh, Penta is boot, booted off the apron by uh, um, Claudio, uh, only to be hit with a back body drop by uh, Ray Phoenix. Uh, straight after, uh, Yuta makes the tag as Claudio stops Phoenix from doing the same as he hits at the giant swing. Uh, Penta manages to make the tag eventually um he starts lighting up his opponents by sending claudio uh out as he dropped you uh willie yuda to his knees or onto his knees rather penta then runs over to raid phoenix hits a canadian destroyer onto claudio on the other side which that sentence just that's a tongue twister for me <laughs> uh phoenix dives uh we uh dr- drive Yuta out to the mat uh, down to the mat rather, uh, but he is able to still kick out. Uh, Blackpool Combat Club responds with a fastball special, um, but Phoenix kicks out around this time again. Claudio uh, takes a cheap shot at and Alex Abarhantes, then distracts the official, which allows uh, Lucha Bros to hit Fear Factor. However, Claudio tries to break it up. The Young Bucks. Uh, turn up, come come from underneath the ring and stop Claudio from getting into the ring here, and that uh, when him, that gave the opportunity for the black for the Lucha Brothers to get the victory and the one two three retaining the Ring of Honor Tag Team Titles after the match. John Moxley praises promises this month, this Sunday will be the most violent match in the history of AEW. Says that if you're offended, then buckle your seatbelts uh, because. You've not seen anything just yet, and that's how AEW Dynamite went off the air. I enjoyed in Dynamite to a de- to a degree. It wasn't like you know, earth shattering or whatever. Um, like, you know, it's not like oh, it's must see or whatever. But it, it was a fine. It was an okay. Uh, I must say dynamite. It was an okay. I mean, it was an okay dynamite. It was an okay go home show. Um, but here is what we got here for the official lineup of the of card for Sunday night. Uh, I am going to uh, include one spoiler here. So if you don't want to hear the spoilers, skip maybe a couple minutes until I start talking about whatever other match here. This has happened on uh, Rampage. Rampage has been filmed, taped, whatever. Um, AEW Trios Championships are on the line. House of Black versus the Acclaimed and Billy Kid, uh, Kidman. Uh, not Billy Kidman. Billy Gunn. Uh, 
House of Black are obviously going to retain the AEW Trios titles. There's no reason to take the AEW Trios titles off of them. I would save um, a big match for House of Black for Double or not Double or Nothing. What's the next show? Forbidden Door. Uh, and I would have them face uh, Naito, uh, Shingo, and uh, not Sonata, and Takahashi LIJ. So that should be fun. Uh, but I, but again, I think the House of Black are going to retain here. Uh, Ethan Page and the Guns, uh, they're going to be taking on how, uh, House Party Hardy, whatever the Hardy Boys, and what was Isaiah Cassidy, but on the Rampage, uh, spoilers, uh, Hook will replace, um, Isaiah Cassidy in that match. It's going to be Hardy Boys and, and, Hook on that there. I don't really care about this match. So there was that. I'm going to go through my, like, I'm going to start with my least favorite matches. I'm, you know, uh, so. Another match I don't really care about that much, uh, which is the ladder match for the TNT Championship, Wardlow versus Christian Cage. Uh, Wardlow's going to retain here. You, uh, though, then again, they're probably going to put the title on Christian Cage because they like to the flip pop that fucking title. That title means nothing. That title has not mean anything since Miro had it. And then it started to mean something on Samoa Joe and then on Darby Allen. And they just said, they said, fuck it. Um, so it's whatever. Uh, but I'm going to go with Wardlow retaining here. Uh, Jay Cargill is not losing the fucking TBS championship until Chris Statler comes back. They are purposely holding that title hostage and that, whatever you, I don't know if it's a division or whatever it is, hostage for somebody who probably is injury prone. And I love Chris Statland, but he's very, at this point, she's injury prone. It seems like. And I just don't think you should just wait. Like, there are other women on that roster that could get at spot. Like, for example, I've said for weeks and months that, in my opinion, Hikaru Shida should be the one to defeat uh, Jay Cargill because Hikaru Shida had one of the longest reigning championship reigns in the company history. Uh, was it, it wasn't very good, but it's no far, uh, fault to her own. Um, I currently I think that Tony Storm right now has a better run as the women's champion. Uh, and it's not Jamie Hader's fault. I love Jamie Hader. We'll get to Jamie Hader in a little bit. Uh, that is all on Tony Khan. But I think, but they're they're obviously saving for Chris Statlander. But again, I still not, I'm not even going to care when Chris Statlander comes back because I just don't care about Jay Cargill or her title reign. It's like to me, she's like to me, she's like the Raquel Rodriguez in a way of the women's division in AEW, like. Like, okay, she's she's hot, she's powerful, and she has a, she the and and she's tall. Okay. Like just because you look like a movie star and whatnot, and you, and you and you're powerful and you look attractive and whatever it is, does not mean you should be pushed. I mean I'm going to give you an example here. Bret Hart did not look like a movie star, did not look like did not look like The Undertaker or did not look like Andre or did not look like Hogan. He looks like a, he was just a, a man's professional wrestler. And that's what it was. So I don't know. Uh, I think she, I still think Shida should be the right one to defeat Jay Cargo, but that's just me. FTR will hopefully defeat uh, Jeff Hardy, not Jeff Hardy, the Team TNA to retain the tag team titles. Another st- storyline I don't really care about, uh, Mark Briscoe is the uh, special referee. To me, the FTR should retain here because I kind of want to see who they're going to have lined up for FTR at Forbidden Door because now, originally, it was going to be Aussie Open, but now with with Mark Davis out with injury, that doesn't look to be happening now. So, and I don't know his status right now. 
if I believe his name is Tangle uh, Tangaloa, I don't know what his uh, if he's still injured or whatnot. If he's not, give us F- FTR versus Gorillas of Destiny. That's a match you could do, and I'm okay with that as a match, um, as a as a backup plan, if you want, or if you want to do another one with Jeff Cobb and whoever his other partner was. Uh, what was it? J- Great Okan. Fine, I don't care. Do something, you know. I mean, I don't know what they're gonna do here, uh, but you know, uh, Orange Cassidy. Uh, defending the uh, all international championship in a 21 blackjack battle royal. Orange Cassidy, I think, is probably going to win here. Uh, I don't see him taking the, anyone taking the title off him just yet. I don't know who they would have him line up for uh, for Big Door. Um, we could go down to go through like the the eight, like the New Japan roster. You know, I don't know. I mean, I could see Kenta coming in, but I think. I think Kenta still wants that match, but CM Punk. Uh, uh, Punk will be back before for Bindor. Maybe Punk will be on the show, uh, wrestle on the show. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe that match with uh, Samoa Joe might actually take place on for Bindor. I mean, we've seen uh, Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm, who are not in opposite companies, wrestle on a for Bindor show. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. Technically, technically. Technically, Samoa Joe would be counting count as like a, a new, new Ring of Honor versus AW, if that makes sense. Um, so there's that. But yeah, I'm going to go with Orange Cassidy to retain here. I don't think he needs to drop the tally anytime soon. Uh, not what I think. What I think should not main event, and I'm hoping Tony Khan makes the right choice to not put this on the main event. Fatal Four Way match for the AEW World Championship: MJF, Jungle Boy. Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, I don't give a shit. But it's probably going to be MJF retaining, even though I think MJF may be one of the worst AEW world champions in history. Like, I don't care if he gets or cuts a great promo or not. Like, and I'm not the biggest ratings guy, but when I, I'll look and I'll check and see what, like, what, you know, every now and then see what, what was, what, what had the, what, uh, Hour had the best rating, and it's every time he's on television, the ratings have either have they or gone down or, or have just not moved, because since winning the title from John Moxley, the ratings have not improved like at all. They keep going down. MJF is not the guy, but people think he is. Neither is Jungle Boy. And I, and I love Darby, but not Darby or Sammy Guevara is the to me. Um, to me, I think the guy who should be taking the title off of MJF is Adam Cole, and I'll and I'll talk about Adam Cole in a little bit. But I think it should just I think it should be Adam Cole taking the title off of MJF. Not I love Eddie Kingston, but I don't think. I don't think AEW sees Eddie Kingston the way you guys see him, which is as world championship material. I don't, I just don't, because if they, if they, if they did, they would have pulled the trigger on Eddie Kingston in fucking in Queens, New York last year when, when uh, Moxley was not the champion. But they had the, the tournament to crown the new champion. You know. But I think I think it's going to be uh, Mo- not Moxley. Fucking Cole that takes the title off of MJF. Speaking of Adam Cole. Actually, we'll get to Adam Cole a little bit. AEW Women's World Championship. Tony Storm. Jamie Hayter. I don't think Jamie Hayter should be. The title should be taken off of Jamie Hayter. Because she still hasn't really done much with the title. And it's not her fault. Uh, she keep she'll keep giving us bangers. That will that will be a uh, uh, for sure. I can see this being one of the matches of the night. Uh, their match at at Full Gear uh, last year was awesome. Uh, one of the best AEW Women's pay per view matches. 
Uh, and I expect no nothing less here. Uh, but I'm going to go with Jamie Hayter here to retain here. There's no reason for, for as of right now, to see the title be taken off of her. And I want to... Th- I want to see some type of stardom involvement uh, for Bendor. I don't give a shit that there's a, they have a, a show that night. Fucking have somebody else on the on the stardom roster fill in for somebody else. Bring over Mayu Iwatani, who's the current IWGP Women's Champion. She can go for and do something with one of these ladies. Bring over fucking Julia, who I think I should hold off. If I'm doing, I would hold off on Julia for all in because she is from London. Or she was born in London, rather. Uh, I would bring in, you could bring Azumi, uh, you can bring in, depending on what they do with Azumi this weekend, whether she, whether or not she's the high speed champion by then remains to be seen. They could bring Utah. If I'm booking this, I'm doing Utami high Shishida versus, uh, Jamie hater on that show. Uh, and for Tony storm, if you want to do something with Tony storm and the, the st- the, the social outcasts or whatever you want to call them, uh, you could uh, bring in a widow tie or something or like how's it be good? You know, actually, I would bring in a widow tie if that, if I would actually, you know what? Yeah, bring in a widow tie there, or well, like do something. I don't know, do something on that line there. Um, Adam Cole, Chris Jericho unsanctioned match with Sabu as the special enforcer. That's a weird... I still can't believe I said Sabu is being a special enforcer in this match in 2023. What the hell is wrong with wrestling this year? It's very fucking weird. Um, this should be good. Um, I want it to be the end of this storyline once, once Adam Cole wins because I just don't... Want to see Jericho continue feuding with with Adam Cole or anyone else on the roster, but he's most likely going to be feuding with CM Punk at some point on Collision. Um, I think Adam Cole is going to win here, and I mentioned earlier Adam Cole is going to go challenge MJF for the AEW Championship and hopefully win the title. What I think is should and most likely will probably main event the show anarchy in the arena the elite versus blackpool combat club uh i think this is gonna be this is i i don't even know if i want to pick a a winner here because this could go either way this is going to be that one match where you don't know who's going to win and the end it all depends on what's going to happen with with Shota Umino, who I'm assuming now is a member of the Blackpool Combat Club. I have no fucking idea. Or uh, Konosuke Takesha, you can bring him in there. Or Don Callis, whose side is he actually on? Uh, I know he turned on the Elite, but we don't actually know what else on that thing here is. Um, what else was I going And then you had, And then you had the whole mystery of is... Is Kota Ibushi going to come in? Like, will we see Kota Ibushi on Sunday? Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen here. So I'm going to go. and the, I'm, I'm going to go with a Blackpool Combat Club win here. Mainly because I think, it's just me uh, spitballing here, but I think the show is going to end with the debut of Kota Ibushi, and we're going to see the reuniting of the Golden Lovers, Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi, and then which is going to lead. We're also going to see. And I also think we're going to uh, to catch a heel turn, uh, and it's going to lead to the five and five eventual. Uh, what is that damn fucking match? So the blood and guts. We're going to have the Elite and Kota Ibushi versus the Blackpool Combat Club with. Kanosuke Takesha. And that's where that whole thing is going to blow off here. Uh, because I don't know when they're going to do the Blood and Guts match, but they'll have something else there. But anyways, uh, but that's what I have all I have to say here about AEW Dynamite and a Double or Nothing. Uh, uh, I'm very excited to watch the Double or Nothing this Sunday. Uh, I've got like 
of fuck the schedule this month or this week is is going to be hella crazy. Um, like let's look at the schedule here that we got here. So, like I said, you're going to watch the Dynamite review tonight. Uh, Friday we have the SmackDown review. Saturday, sometime Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, Saturday night, whenever it is going to be. Uh, we got the Stardom Flashing Champions. Not fight. I, I, I the other night in my on the, during the Raw review called it the Fighting Champions. It's Flashing Champions review. Uh, that's going to have the double uh, title match between uh, Mina Shirakawa and uh, Tam Nakano. That should be interesting. Uh, and then we have Sunday's Double or Nothing review. I will talk about may or I may or may not talk about depending how how whether or not Triple H decides to piss me off during that show, and whether or not Rousey Ogawa decides to piss me off during the Stardom show, I will talk about Night of Champions during the Stardom review. Uh, but again, let me know Let me know what you guys think, what you want to see happen this Sunday. Uh, links in the description down below for my uh, other outlets are going to be there. I've been Matt the Misfit. This is the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Until then, I will see you guys back here for... SmackDown, we're out.